This time Brad Sperlin is going to come and uh, share with you just for a little while about passion in the college ministry. Brad? Good morning. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, I'm Brad Sperlin. My wife, Elizabeth, and I um, lead the college group here. Um, you know, we're I, generally that just means that some of these kids let us just hang out with them every once in a while. So anyway, it makes me feel younger and older at the same time. So uh, most some of these kids back here were, you know, like this tall when I started coming to church here. So it makes me feel a little old sometimes. Anyway, um, part of this today, the biggest part of this is just for you to get to see some of our college students and just get to see their heart for Jesus and their heart for worship. Um, but another part of today is in January, we'll be taking our fifth trip to a conference called Passion. Um, Passion started probably almost 20 years ago, 17, 18 years ago, something like that. Started by a man named Louis Giglio. If you don't know who he is, he's a um, if you know who Andy Stanley is, Andy and Louie grew up together, um, and uh, they are both went into ministry about the same time, and they've, they've got probably the two biggest churches in Atlanta. So, But Passion was started, um, and it's run by a group called uh, 268 Generation. And that where they get the 268 is the verse that this movement was founded on, and it's Isaiah 26, 8. And it says, Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. I think another version, um, that's the NLT. I think there's another version that says our heart's desire is to make you famous. And so that's what passion is all about. It's about college kids. Um, or I say college kids. It's 18 to 25-year-olds. And fortunately for me, they're adult leaders um, coming together to worship God and to... Uh, learn more about him and to grow closer to him. And something, uh, Twitter, if y'all know what that is, most of you probably do. Uh, Louis Giglio actually posted something this morning. There was two different things that I thought they were really good and they apply to um, just worship in general, but today especially. Um, first he said, if no one applauds, God's glory does not suffer. He was and is and is to come. And then he said, our worship does not add to God's worth. He is God. Our worship adds God's worth to our lives. And I thought that was really appropriate for today, and it's special, I mean, not just for today, but for worship in any day. Um, like I said, we're getting ready to go to Passion. We'll be leaving on January the 1st. Uh, we'll be going to Atlanta this year. Uh, we'll be going to uh, leave early in the morning, not real early in the morning, but the morning of January 1st, and we'll be back really late on January the 4th. Um, and part of today, we're going to have a dessert auction, and we've done this before to raise funds for Passion. Um, it's not a cheap trip. Uh, it's uh, f three or four nights in hotels in Atlanta, which are not cheap, and the conference is about $140 a person. So it's a pretty expensive trip, and if you've ever been to college or have children that have gone to college, you know that college is expensive, and paying for extra trips is not an easy thing to do. So we do something like this just to kind of help offset some of that cost because it's about $300 a kid to go. So at the end of service today, we'll have some dessert set up in the foyer, and it's just a silent auction. There'll be bid sheets. Um, there's some really good stuff. I'll tell you, Miss Betty made two big banana puddings. Um, so if you've ever had Miss Betty's banana pudding, you know what those are worth. So, But anyway, we just want for y'all to pray for these college kids. Um, and without prayer from the church without support from y'all including financial support i know people get tired of being asked for money but um it's a really it's a great cause and i've seen um the positive effects of passion on kids that uh, are no longer in college that are adults now and and the things that it's done in their lives and and uh the effect it has on them so um, like that'll be out there. The auction will start at the end of this service and run through the welcome in the second service. If you're not going to be in the second service and you want to bid on something, then please go ahead, write your phone number down, and if you have the highest bid, then we'll I'll call you after church and we'll make arrangements to get it to you. Or you can stay, you know, through the welcome in the second service. And if you're leaving at that point, if you got the highest bid, then we'll go ahead and let you take it then. But for the most part, the uh, the winning bids will be announced after the second service. So, but thank you all so much for for uh, 
just supporting college kids and supporting this ministry and, and allowing us to go on trips like this. So thank you. Sydney Allen's going to come now and share with you just a moment. Hi. Um, as Brother Paul mentioned, I just graduated from Whitehall in May, and I will be moving to Washtenaw Baptist University on August 23rd. I'm the only person from my class that is going to OBU this year, so it's going to be very interesting adjusting to not really knowing many people there. But um, what I wanted to share with you guys is um, that I got to go and be a chaperone for Century Kid, and we got back last Saturday, and that was a really amazing experience. When I was in seventh grade, by the time I came into the youth ministry, I started helping at the back with the kids. And so, I mean, I've been in the, involved in this ministry all the way up through um, middle school and high school. But it was really cool to actually have the opportunity to go off for a week and work with these kids and with Amanda and the other adults that went. Um, not only was I a chaperone and helped corral the kids during the day and um, at night, and I had a cabin with the kids and all that kind of stuff, but Amanda actually gave me the opportunity to go and be a team assistant. So what that meant at Century Kid is that I kind of got the best of both worlds. I got to chaperone our kids, but I also got to work alongside the staff members all week. As most of you know, um, almost it'll be about a year in September or October, I surrendered to um, children's ministry, and I will be studying to be a children's minister. And so um, I've always kind of wanted to go and be a staff member and do all those things where I get more opportunities to work with kids and to grow more and get more in touch with with kids and how to reach them. And so as a team assistant, I worked alongside the staff all week. Every morning I got to go to staff meetings and not only have like a quiet time with them, but also a short devotion before they talked about the day and what would be going on and who would be doing what. I uh, worked both rotations of recreation with um, our blue team staffer. That's who I was assigned to. So I got to hang out with the kids that had just finished fifth grade all week. So that was very fun to see how they tie recreation into the Bible. After every single game of rotation that you went through, we always sat down and had a debrief session. And they talked about the game and what was hard about the game, what was easy about the game, and how that related to what Jesus came and did for us when he came and died on the cross. And then from there, I got to go hang out with our kids at lunch. And then I would go back, and some of the kids would go to Bible study, and others would go to what they called party. And in party, the kids learned about missions, and they also played games to earn coins for their team to see who would win at the end of the week. So that was really cool. All the staff members for the majority were teaching Bible study, so the team assistants took over, and I was actually the only team assistant that week to kind of help the kids on the floor because the other staff members were on stage or doing behind the scenes for sound. So that was very interesting uh, to, to be with all those kids. After um, party, I went and rotated, just like the kids did, through three different tracks. And in the tracks as well, they um, connected those to the Bible. After each thing you did, I worked with the kids on, in soccer. I did cheer gymnastics, and then I did dance. So that was really fun to, uh, to hang out with more kids. And after the first day, I felt really bad because I had kids coming up to me. Hi, Miss Sydney. And I'm like, hey, bud, how are you? Because I didn't remember their names. But um, hopefully I'll get better at that through the years. So to be a chaperone... Um, at 18, that was interesting to just come right out of a youth group where I'm the camper and to be the adult that the kids are looking at. And so that was a really fun adjustment to make. And I got to spend time with a bunch of awesome kids and uh, learn more about them. I got to talk to several kids and we had so many salvation decisions that were made. And that was so amazing to see that those kids are getting it and they really understand what we've been teaching them and the, what their parents have been teaching them at home. So um, I wanted to thank Brother Paul and Miss Amanda for giving me the opportunity to go first off since um, I just graduated and all of that. But um, as college students, we really do have an amazing opportunity to get involved in so, in so many ministries. And so it's really cool to, to see um, that what I'm going to be doing with my life and what God has called me to do is already starting. And I'm already getting into that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, hopefully applying to be a Century Kids staffer next year and go get to do what Kaylee did and what she'll talk to you guys about in a minute. So um, thanks again for giving me the opportunity. This time Kaylee Doggett's going to share for just a moment, and then after her, uh, Hannah Dampier will come and share. 
Good morning. Um, my name is Kaylee Doggett. Um, I probably looks like I'm about to get up here and preach a sermon, but I promise I'm not. So um, I'm here to tell you about my experience at CentraKid this summer. I was a CentraKid staffer um, in South Carolina for six weeks. So that's where I've um, spent most of my summers in South Carolina, um, being a CentraKid staffer. But um, if you don't know what CentraKid is, CentraKid is um, a church camp for um, third through sixth graders. It's a week-long camp that um, third through sixth graders go to um, just to learn about God, to learn about the gospel. It's a very gospel-centered camp. Um, Everything we do is about the gospel. Everything we do is rooted in scripture. Um, So that's pretty much what it is. All these kids are coming, and we want them to learn about God. We want them to leave and um, have a life-changing experience with God. Um, That's one of the first things they told us at CentraKid at training week. They told us, um, your goal is to not let one child leave without a life-changing encounter with God. And so that's a pretty big goal. There's about 500 kids each week, um, just depending on what size of the what size camp it is, but um, our goal as staffers is to make sure that um, they do have a life-changing encounter with God and that they do see God in the week that they're with us. And so um, I have two verses that I feel pretty, go um, go along with Central Kid pretty well. Um, the first one is Psalm 78, 4. Um, it says, we will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. And um, my first week of camp, uh, one of my friends sent me a letter, and she put that verse in there, and um, I'd honestly never heard that verse before, and um, it just reminded me of why I'm here. You know, I'm here to tell the next generation. I'm here to make sure that these kids know about God and that um, they don't leave here without knowing about God. And another verse that um, has to go along with it, because since your kid is a a pretty tiring experience if you've ever worked a um, summer camp or something like that. Um, it's pretty exhausting, and by the end of the summer, you're about ready to go home. You, I don't think um, I could have given another kid another high five before um, I left. But um, this verse has, has to do with um, God providing, and it's um, Matthew 7, 7, and it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock at the door, and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And um, that verse, it just, um, I asked for God to provide me with strength every day, um, with energy every single day. And um, I mean, there were honestly days that I woke up and I was so exhausted, so tired, waking up at 7 a.m. every morning and not going to bed till like midnight. It can be pretty exhausting, but I would wake up in the morning and I would honestly think I would rather be dead than to do this for one more day. And so um, that's when I would pray to God. I'd say, God, I know I can't do it. I can't do it by myself. There's no way that it's going to be me. It's going to have to be you. And so um, I really got down to my bare bones, I guess, at Central Kid and um, really learned how to let God use me and God work through me because it definitely wasn't me. It definitely wasn't any of the staffers because there's no way that we could have just gotten up and done that and had that much energy every single day. And um, if you've ever talked to a Central Kid staffer or any huge staffer or anything like that um, about their experience, they'll probably say something like, um, it's very rewarding, but it's very exhausting. And so I'm just here to verify that. It is very rewarding because... um, it's a very, it's awesome to see how many kids, like, not only come to Christ, but ask questions, um, come up and ask hard questions about um, things that they want to know about God. They're eager to learn. They're eager to know more. And it's awesome to just see that and be a part of that. And um, I have one specific example of how um, God, um, is, God's timing is perfect, and he plans everything out for um, a good purpose. But um, I worked with third graders all summer, so... <laughs> That was fun. But, um, yeah, I worked with third graders. So I was with the little babies all all summer. Um, I didn't have the chance to get to talk to, like, the sixth graders that much or anything like that. But had a church group um, the fifth week of camp. And um, one of the little girls came down with one of her friends, and she said, I need to go talk. It was an invitation after worship. She was like, I need to go talk to you. And I was like, okay. And so I made her friend go sit down, and I took her with me, and I said, um, I was like, what's wrong? Before we even got out, we go outside of the building to go find a seat to, like, privately sit somewhere where we can just talk to them one-on-one. And so um, before we even got out of the building, she, she was bawling, just crying, just did, like, uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollably crying. And I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And um, we sat down. I was like, hey, let's sit down. Let's figure out. Um, just tell me what's going on. What do you want to talk about? And she said, um, my mom has stage four lung cancer. And she said, um, I've just been asking why God, like, why would God do this? My mom is, um, 
had such strong faith in, um, through it all, she's had cancer for about six years. She said my mom's had the best faith. She still praises God for everything that she does and um, everything that he does. And um, she, she said, I just don't know why God would do something, uh, something like that to someone like her. She's such a good person. She's always does what she's supposed to. She's um, raised us up in church, everything. I just don't know why um, he would do that. And so um, I w- honestly wasn't prepared for that question um, I, because um, – but it was really cool because a lot of you probably know, but my grandfather recently passed away from cancer. And um, so that's something that I went through, too. And so it was cool to see how God, like, used my experience to help her with her experience. Because um, it's such a tragic thing. It's such a bad event, such a bad thing. But to see how he put her in my life, he put her in my church group, he put me there to talk to her about it. Um, none of the other staffers would have been able to... Um, relate to her on that, would have been able to sympathize with her on that, but I was able to, and so um, that was a really cool experience for me, just to see how God can use everything for good, um, no matter what the circumstance is, and so, um, I don't make everybody cry, but um, yeah, Centricator was a great experience, Um, it really helped me to grow my faith, and to, um, I learned how to be intentional in every moment of every day, um, at breakfast, when you're eating with kids, when you're walking to to um, a class with them, um, you can be intentional um, in everything you do in every single moment of every day. And so that's just um, one of the main things that I learned um, at camp and that also that God provides in the best ways. Um, that's all I really have to say. So thank you. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Hannah Dampier. Uh, this is extremely nerve-wracking. Getting handed the microphone, that is. I've stood in front of people before, but it's always been in that little aquarium over there. And this is much, much worse, I promise. So I'm kind of probably going to ramble a little bit, but hold with me. I'll get to the end, and then Brother Paul can come up here and do his thing. Um, So I was asked probably a couple weeks ago to uh, come and talk about college group and how the Bible study helps me and how it just kind of keeps me going. And um, to be honest with y'all, we went on vacation last week, and I did not really think about what I was going to say until about this morning. So this is all going to come straight from the heart. Uh, College group is really just a way to stay connected to your church whenever you leave because um, people are right whenever they say that you go to college, like you have to find people to hang out with that to keep with your faith. Like I found I was very lucky to find a great group of girls. I mean, the most amazing girls that in the world, they'll text me every morning and send me a Bible verse and tell me to make it through my day and, like, just to help us. And, like, so whenever you come home for the summer, I, didn't, I don't want to say I lost them because they're still there, obviously, but I don't have that constant reminder. And college group is a way to keep connected with people that are like that, the people that will support you and that um, know what you're going through as a college student that, it's different from all the other stages of your life. You're not always with your family, and you're not always with your friends. You're just kind of everywhere because you're constantly driving to school and driving home. And so at Bible study on Tuesday night at Brad and Miss Liz's, it's you get free dinner, which is cool. Um, but also, they we always watch a video. It's been Andy Stanley lately, and he's really, really good. And we watch the video, and then Brad will, like, ask us questions to, like, get the conversation going. But usually we don't need questions. We talk a lot. Um, so we, uh, we'll have a discussion. And this really helps to take on the real world. Like, you understand things that you don't get in high school. You have different situations, and people don't talk about those when you're in crosswalk or whatever because you don't have those situations. So you learn about dealing with um, – Uh, professors that kind of get on your nerves and with different people that you just don't handle. You just kind of, you learn how to um, take on the world, basically, as a college student. That's what college group does for me, really. It helps me maintain my faith as I'm taking a break from college, but not taking a break from my faith. You Because, like I said, college really helped me actually grow stronger in my faith and passion really, it was amazing. Like, you get there, and like what Brother Bob said, you worship just 24-7, basically. You get there, and you know when Hillsong doesn't even come on the stage until 11 o'clock that you're going to be there all night long because they're a very 
continuously singing band. They sing the same song for about 20 minutes. And it's really, it's awesome, though. And that continues into college group because that's what we do. We talk about passion and what we learned at passion. And then we watch videos from, like, previous passions. And it's just really awesome. And I really am so thankful to have a college group like this at our church. And I'm thankful to have a church body that supports our college group. And I just really appreciate all of y'all and all of your prayers and all of your financial support. And I'd like to thank all of you for listening to me ramble. Thank you. All right, I want to say a special thank you to all those that spoke uh, today. One of our purposes was to introduce you to passion, but also to let you know of what God is doing in the lives of our college students, how they're teaching. And I, I hope that you caught all that was spoken this morning, whether being an adult to see how you can impact college students, uh, those that have already graduated high school. And yes, statistics say that once you graduate high school, things you know kind of fall by the wayside or faith or church attendance or any of those kind of things. But what a wonderful opportunity to hear how God continues to work and give people opportunities uh, to, to share. And uh, Kaylee, I, where'd you, where'd you go? There, over there. I was like, where'd you go? Uh, I can remember back because I worked centrifuge uh, after graduating college as a staffer and the wonderful opportunities. And yes, it is very rewarding, but it is very tiring with uh, teenagers. I can only imagine with kids at Centra Kids. So uh, wonderful opportunities. But I just want to share with you one quick note to summarize everything up as we come to a close. I hope that you didn't just hear um, great things that God has done in the lives, but what God is doing in the lives of all of us when we give him the opportunity to open up uh, wherever we might be. Uh, Yeah, college students, getting them to speak in front of people is not uh, a very comfortable thing. Uh, um, You know, and so opportunities like this, whether it be as a chaperone, you know, in the, our own church, ministering to kids, uh, knowing these kids, volunteering in that aspect, whether it's staying connected and every week coming to the home group, whether it's going to Passion, or whether it's serving all summer as a staffer with kids from all over the country. It's wonderful opportunities, but you know, it reminds me that God can work in each and every one of our lives when we give Him the opportunity to do that. We may think, yeah, college students, they're young, they have a lot of energy. Uh, Kaylee, was there a lot of energy uh, at camp? I mean, it was kind of one of those things. You said we had to pray for energy, uh, and it was just one of, those, one of those opportunities. But each and every one of us have that. And I just want to share with you a verse that comes to my mind when I, when I remember and, and think about not just college students but the opportunities God gives us. In Second Timothy chapter 3, very familiar passage, the, the Apostle Paul, as he is teaching Timothy, who was a teenager himself, when helping to lead a church, not just be a staffer, but to lead a church. In Second Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse, 10, in verse 14, but he says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy, infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, Paul gives us a challenge, saying that just as you've received this information, and it's not just information, but it's faith in salvation through Jesus Christ. Continue to do what God has called you to do. And that's what I want to challenge each and every one of us today, is that as we've hear these testimonies of what God is doing. We continue in our faith journey every single day. You never know when God is going to give you an opportunity. And yes, sometimes we do have to pray to be intentional. God, what can I do in this moment? Sometimes we have to ask that question. But I want to challenge you to do that because just like these college students, whether they spoke a testimony or sang in the choir or or helping out in some other area, God gives each and every one of us opportunities. And we want to continue to walk in that journey of faith because whether you're... um, 
18 or 28 or 48 or 68 or above, it doesn't matter. God still can give us opportunity (laughs) or way above. God still gives us opportunities that we may be able to serve him and love him and see the great things that God is doing to us. So my challenge for each and every one of us today is what opportunity has God given you today? It may not be in the form that we have heard about today, but God has given you an opportunity to love and to serve. Where are you going to serve today? Let's pray together.